I don't make any money off of this channel. You know, it doesn't matter how many views I get. I've gotten like 5 million views so far. And I'm not making a dime off of this because it's demonetized. Because I can't get it monetized for reasons that aren't really important. Uh, uh, basically, the SBU, when they took over my accounts, they took over like my Google AdSense accounts. And because of my current circumstances, I can't create a new one. You know, all kinds of hassle. And so basically, you know, the, the channel, this channel that you're watching, I'm doing it for free. And so anyway, I, I, I just want to say that up front because I want you to pass around this video to as many people as possible. If you're an American, okay, this is for the American audience and to a lesser extent the European audience, but the American audience exclusively, I mean, uh, uh, as a priority rather. You see, I want you to show this to every single American that you possibly can so that they can understand what is about to happen to them, okay? And what is about to happen to them is an escalation of this war here in Eastern Europe. Now, the mainstream media, for you guys in America, you watch the mainstream media and it seems that, you know, the Ukrainians are winning against the Russians. Yeah, it's, it's only a matter of time, right? Although lately, if you're paying closer attention, you seem to see like, wait, things aren't going so rosy for the Ukrainians, right? But anyway, I mean, the mainstream media is saying that they're basically winning and that's a complete lie. That is an utter and complete lie. Every day, the Russians are chewing up more of the Ukrainian armed forces. They are killing off or wounding over a thousand men a day. A day. And this is from Ukrainian sources, okay? A thousand Ukrainian soldiers are either killed or captured or wounded in, an, in a way that makes them uh, 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 not combat effective anymore. That's 30,000 men a month. It is credibly estimated at this time that there are possibly as many as 70,000 dead Ukrainians, 70, 70. And the low end of these estimates is 45,000 killed, killed. The total Ukrainian armed forces before this combat uh, began on the 24th of February was uh, 230,000. If you take the low end of the estimates, over 20% of the forces have been killed. And that's the low end of the estimates. Killed. Forget about captured and wounded. The war is going catastrophically for Ukraine. The Russians are relentlessly winning. And they are going to take over huge swaths of territory of this country. Because I'm in Ukraine right now. I'm in the city of Kharkov. I hear, rather, the shelling every day. And the shelling gets closer every day. The mainstream media is lying to you. The Russians are winning, definitively. And because they are winning so definitively, and they have no intention of stopping, I mean, why would they? They're winning. Well, the Biden administration finds itself that they have put all of their chips on Ukraine and Ukraine is definitively losing. It's quite frankly a miracle that the Ukrainian armed forces is still standing after the annihilation it has received. It is, it is inconceivably horrible what has happened to these young men and every single one of them is a brave man with a family and they've died and they've died pretty much for nothing except the desires of the Biden administration. And now the Biden administration finds itself with a catastrophic loss and so they are going to escalate. And the way they, it seems that they are going to escalate is by creating a situation, an incident in Lithuania. Lithuania, one of the Baltic republics, one of the members of NATO, well, the Baltic Republic of Lithuania has cut off access of Russian railway to Kaliningrad. Now, for those of you who don't know, you know, basically, you know, here's Russia, here is Lithuania, and over here is a little piece called Kaliningrad that's on the Baltic Sea. That this was captured in the Second World War, but it's detached from the mainland of Russia. Lithuania is between them. And Lithuania has had an agreement, a long-standing agreement, of over 30 years 
that they would never impede any train between Russia and Kaliningrad. That they would basically consider that train like a corridor that could go back and forth between Kaliningrad and Russia. And now they've cut it. And now they are making moves in terms of moving troops. Now, Lithuania has a microscopic army, but the Polish army is also on the move. The Polish army has been making moves on the Belarusian border. All of this leads me to conclude realistically that at this time, there is the intention by NATO to provoke the Russians into defending Kaliningrad. Now, Kaliningrad, you know, it, it's one of those areas that's armed to the teeth, okay? The Russians have all kinds of weapons there. The, the actual territory of Kaliningrad, right? They're not really worried about it. That's not the issue. The issue is Russia, Russian territory is going to be attacked by the Lithuanians and the Poles. And what are the Russians supposed to do? Just, you know, sit there and take it? Of course not. They're going to hit back and they're going to hit hard. They're going to hit harder, much harder than they've hit Ukraine. Why? Because the Russians could consider the Ukrainians a, a brother people. Lithuanians, they're just foreigners. They don't care about the Lithuanians. And the Poles, same thing. I mean, the Russians and the Poles have hated each other for going on 400 years, okay? And so now it seems clear that Lithuania and Poland are setting up the conditions to provoke Russia into attacking one or the other or both. And this will draw in all the other NATO states, including the United States. Now, it doesn't take a genius to realize that the brains behind this idiotic idea are American brains, the Biden administration. There are crazies in the State Department and in the U.S. Senate and in the Biden administration itself. They all want war with Russia. And they're sick and tired of pussyfooting around using the proxy of Ukraine to fight against the Russians. And so they want to have American troops fighting directly against Russians. This will be a catastrophe, and I will explain to you why. Because you see, the Ukrainian armed forces were NATO trained. NATO trained approximately 10 to 12,000 Ukrainian troops every year for the past eight years. That is, approximately 80 to 100,000 Ukrainian soldiers were trained to NATO standards. NATO standards in terms of tactics, maneuvers, communication, control, everything. The Ukrainian armed force was the largest, best equipped, and best trained NATO army that has ever been fielded. Man for man, it was better than the American armed forces, and that's the truth. They are certainly better motivated because, after all, the Ukrainian soldiers, well, they're defending their own land from the Russian invaders. So they're better trained, better equipped, and more motivated. And they have been annihilated. What do you think will happen to Lithuanian troops, Polish troops, or American troops that go up against the Russians? They're going to be annihilated too, especially because the Russian troops at this time, what they have been doing is that they have been rotating all of their troops constantly. They've only put in, at any one given time, about 190,000 troops. At this time, it's, it's uh, uh, estimated that they only have 130,000 troops. But their entire army of over a million men has been rotated through Ukraine. They all have combat experience, hardcore combat experience. They're going to annihilate the Americans. And this is where the danger comes in. I don't care how much you love the American flag. I don't care how much you say that America number one and best equipped army and all that bullshit. The fact is they're going to be annihilated by the Russians like that. And after the Biden administration out of panic and out of a cavalier attitude that it's no big deal, they are going to use nuclear weapons. They are going to do that. The United States has never taken off the first strike option from its menu of options in so far as the military conflict is concerned. The Russians have. The Russians have stated definitively that they will never use nuclear weapons on a first strike uh, basis. Never. Only in response to a nuclear attack. But the Americans have never made that promise. And the Biden administration, it doesn't know how to take a step back. 
It doesn't know how to wind it down. It only knows how to double down. And the Biden administration is clearly creating a provocation in Eastern Europe with Lithuania and Poland against the Russians, goading the Russians exactly as they goaded the Russians with Ukraine. Because remember, the reason this war started, and this is something that the US mainstream media will not tell you, the reason this started was because the Ukrainians had gathered their army, over 100,000 combat troops in the Donbass, and they were getting ready to invade the Donbass and potentially invade Russia. That's why this war kicked off on the 24th of February, because the Ukrainian armed forces were going to invade the Donbass and Russia in mid-March. And that's the truth. That's a truth that is being hidden from you by the mainstream media in the United States, but that everybody outside of the United States and the Western European news bubble knows. You just have to look around a little bit and you'll find that what I'm telling you is true. So you have to understand that the Biden administration is goading the Russians in Lithuania and Poland over this Kaliningrad situation because they want a war with the Russians so that it will distract from the rampant inflation and the catastrophic economic situation going on in the United States. That's why they want a war. And you Americans who are listening to me, I'm not making money off of this video. This video doesn't do me any benefit at all. But I am telling you, this is what's happening. And you have to tell your leaders, your congressman, your senator, whomever, to not keep on goading the Russians pointlessly. I'm telling you this, but, you know, even as I'm telling you this, I'm, I'm trying to be, you know, the, the good person to, you know, use the audience that I've accumulated to spread a message that is reasonable. No more war. No more war, especially no war in order to cover up a deteriorating economic situation, which is what is going on here. The Biden administration wants a war, a direct U.S.-Russia war, to hide the catastrophic inflation and the catastrophic economic situation. That's why they're doing it. And I want to prevent that. And that's why I'm making this video. And please share it with as many Americans as you possibly can. And yet at the same time, I realize that it might be futile. Because so many Americans are so passive. I would say that the majority of Americans are just passive and accepting. They accept evil when they see it, when it's staring them in the face. When their own children are being you know, groomed to be catamites. When their own cities are destroyed and set on fire. When their entire nation is driven into the ground. And Americans just accept this. So I'm doing this video because I think it's the right thing to do. And yet at the same time, I have no faith whatsoever in the American people who it could be that every single American in the United States listens to this video. And my fear is that they will do what they always do, which is nothing.